Hello, hello! Today we're going to be looking at the Bombardier Learjet 45, the first jet aircraft in this mini-series of videos. So the Learjet is a light business aircraft which can seat up to 9 passengers and is powered by two Honeywell turbofan engines. The aircraft will cruise along happily at 510 miles an hour or 445 knots and it also boasts an impressive service ceiling of 51,000 feet. So, while I'm sure we'd all love to jump inside and experience the luxury of a business jet, we can't. Oh, But, we can jump into the cockpit and learn how to fly this plane. So, let's start on the left and work our way across this panel. First up, we have our buttons for accessing various 2D panels. We'll take a closer look at these later on. Below that, you've got a digital clock, which also has a stopwatch function. And then the last dial on the left here is an angle of attack indicator which indicates the angle at which the air is hitting the wings. You can monitor this to prevent putting the aircraft into a stall. Now next up you have your primary flight display. If you haven't already seen it, I'd recommend watching my video on glass cockpits here, which explains displays like this in much more detail. On the PFD in this plane you have the airspeed, attitude and altitude indicators at the top. And then the bottom half has a horizontal situation indicator and a vertical speed indicator there. One last thing to note at the bottom of this display, there's a little dial which you can use to adjust the barometric pressure. The STD button next to it is used to revert the barometric pressure back to the standard pressure, which is either 29.92 inches or 1013 millibars, depending on where in the world you're flying. The next display is your multi-function display which gives you a few pieces of information. The top left kind of quarter holds all of your engine performance info. Beside that you have a space for advisory messages. Underneath the engine section you have fuel information and beside that is a couple of extra bits of information. Then at the bottom you have trim indicators alongside a spoiler or air brake indicator and then finally a flaps position indicator. It's also worth noting that none of these buttons along the bottom work, unfortunately. Moving over to the right side of the panel, first we have some backup instruments. Here you have the airspeed, attitude and altitude. Underneath those you have an annunciator panel, and then in the bottom right you have two panels. The one on the left is your radio stack. The numbers in white are active frequencies, the numbers in blue are your standby frequencies which can be adjusted. And then on the right you have your landing gear lever along with indicator lights. Finally along the top of the panel, on the left you have a couple of controls. First you have your nav and GPS buttons there. And then you also have two dials which are used to control what is displayed on the horizontal situation indicator down there. So if you need some extra information for navigating, you can enable or disable it from here. And then along the rest of this section you have your various autopilot controls. The buttons will enable or disable a function and then you'll also have several knobs which you can use to adjust the values. So that covers all of the main panel. Let's jump into the game and have a look at a couple of 2D panels unique to this plane. Okay here we are in the plane so let's have a look at some of these other 2D panels. So the first one here that we'll look at is the throttle quadrant which is the little plane icon here. So, um, on the throttle quadrant you'll notice that you've got a few buttons up at the top here. You actually cannot click on any of these. Now you'll notice that your mouse cursor will change as you hover over them. This actually um, is the top of the throttle um, sort of controls there, so if I click on it you'll see the throttle will go up there. So none of those buttons that you can see are actually available, it's actually just the tops of the throttle uh, click spots there. On the left you have your um, spoiler or air brake lever there. Um, down here you've got your parking brake, you've also got your throttles here as well. Now you can actually drag these down a little bit and that will go into reverse thrust mode. Like so. Just reset that. And then last control here is your flaps lever. So you've got your three stages of flaps and then you've got your little air speeds to tell you uh, the safe extension speeds for the flaps there. Next icon will be your little lightning bolt here, which is your electrical systems. So here you've got uh, sort of a couple of lights and a couple of electrical switches here. So you've got interior lights here, exterior lights here, and then you've got uh, electrical buttons here. So you've got 
your battery master, left generator, right generator, avionics master switch, and then a couple of anti-ice uh, switches there as well. Next up you have your fuel gauges which opens up in the top corner here. So you've got your left engine, your right engine and a couple of fuel controls there. So you've got um, your fire extinguisher options for your engines and then the starter switch and then the ignition switch. And then you've got uh, fuel tank controls there as well. Next icon here is uh, simply a small panel for your APU. Now these are actually not clickable buttons, these are just indicator lights. You've got a little voltmeter here so you can see when the APU is running, a start and stop switch and also the APU has a fire extinguisher because the APU is essentially a mini jet engine in the back of the plane. And then the last panel here is simply your pitch control so you can control your pitch trim from here or not your pitch trim but any trim from here. So that's about everything for the uh, 2D panel side of thing. Let's jump into the uh, virtual cockpit and have a quick look around. So if we zoom in here, you can see that all of those kind of extra little panels actually um, are available down underneath the main panel here. So you can see you've got your electrical there, you know, your lights and key levers and things down here. Um, there's no sort of overhead panel in this plane. It's all, um, all of the extra kind of functions are down underneath the main displays. And then in the center, you've got your throttle pedestal. And then down here, you've got a few last kind of features here. So you've got your APU panel, your various trims, and your engine and fuel controls there. So this layout is um, sort of what you'd see typically in a commercial airline. And now uh, you see that the pilot and the co-pilot have got sort of equal displays and equal instruments on both sides. Um, and then you've got your throttle. And then sometimes you'll see in planes as well, you've got some extra controls on a kind of center console here as well. So, um, so that's pretty much everything for uh, for the Learjet 45. So that's everything for the Learjet 45. Next up we'll take a larger aircraft from Bombardier which is the CRJ 700. I hope to see you there. Many thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.